Young America Films, constantly blamed for their own disadvantages by Boomer America Films. Bicycle Safety? They didn't even bother to actually title the short, they just named it after the short genre? Oh god, is this a Friedberg and Seltzer spoof? Oh, my mistake, it seems to be Alice Hitchcock Presents. What can compare with the thrill of a brand new bike? Such Those thrill. Days of wishing and waiting are finally over. And the proud new owner can look forward to enjoying his bike in many ways. Well, the one way, but you know. For bicycling is a healthy, active sport, enjoyed by almost everyone. Except those party-pooping so paraplegics. Vigorous outdoor exercise. But it means quick, easy transportation to and from school. Wait, I'm homeschooled. Where the hell am I going? It's a nice, fast way of getting from one place to another. Bike as fast as you want, kid. You'll never escape the boring narrator. And it may even be a means of earning money. You can sucker your bike into your MLM. You're taking a lot of responsibility in owning and riding a bicycle. For you are now an operator of a wheeled vehicle. Well, technically, the same way we YouTubers are technically comedians. You are the automobile driver of tomorrow. Automobile driver of tomorrow! Often turn out to be the best drivers. That's an excessive design for a bike. ...would think of flying an airplane that was not in perfect condition. He knows that his very life depends upon his plane, so he inspects it carefully before flying. Where the hell did I leave the keys? So you should check your vehicle, your bike, to see that everything is in good condition. If you don't know how to check your bike, get a bike mechanic to help you. Who am I kidding? This will never fly. Check to see that the handlebars, grips, and pedals are tight. Make your bike look like a rejected design from our real monsters. Vroom, vroom. Adjust the seat so that your knee is slightly bent when the pedal is all the way down. Then stand motionless for several seconds. Be sure that the chain and sprocket are well guarded. In fact, just rebuild your bike from scratch each time. No check is complete unless spokes are tight. A spoke shouldn't spoke unless speaking to. Every bicycle should have a bell or horn for use as a warning signal. Or just scream at the top of your lungs. If your bicycle is to be ridden at night, it should have a headlight which is visible for at least 500 feet. And make sure it's bright enough to blind every motorist who crosses your path. And it should have a tail light or at least an approved reflector. Be sure to check your reflector with reflector approval appraisal. And finally, your bike must have good brakes. Come on, big good money, big money! Depend on it several times a day. Jerry Mathers the as the beaver. Bike in top condition is only the beginning. Cars, trucks, buses, and bicycles, all are vehicles. Yeah, close-up directed by Coleman Francis. Keep to the right side of the road or street. That side is for slowly moving vehicles. Really milking that slowly moving identity, huh? When riding in a group, ride in single file at the extreme right of the roadway. Be sure to keep a safe distance behind the bike ahead of you. Wow, it really looks like they're biking all by themselves. Jim Henson could do anything. Before riding out of alleys or driveways... Check for product placement. Be sure the way is clear. The light is good. You have no fear, nor no one should. When crossing heavily traveled streets or highways, it's better to dismount and walk across with your bike. This precaution gives you a much better chance of avoiding the passing car. Uwe Boll decided to mash up Frogger and Paperboy into a single film. Turning left at a busy intersection is a problem for the bicyclist. If he's Derek Zoolander. The is to ride across the intersection and stop at the far right corner. Then, as soon as the light changes, turn and ride off in the new direction. You can't spell biking without almost spelling boring. Every bicyclist should know the proper hand signals and should... Up yours, Dillweed! ...or stopping. Be sure you know what the correct signals are in your community and use them at all times. Let's just follow this kid home in real time. It's not going to be less interesting than the rest of the short. 
Before turning left, be sure to look behind you. This will keep you from turning into the side of a passing automobile. Or the side of a beautiful house with a beautiful wife. Then make the turn with both hands on the handlebars. That means you, Flowbots. Even stops require signals while you're on the street. Okay, this is just for me, but the narrator sounds way too much like the guy who left Diane in the Cheers pilot. Your depth frightens me. Carry parcels or books in a basket or luggage carrier. You need both hands free for proper operation of your bike. Never carry anything which obstructs your view of the road. In these days, bicycle safety was the backbone of the American economy. Your bicycle was made to carry one person. Dan Fogelberg. Or is not only bad for the bike, it's downright dangerous. <laughs> At least they're not wearing hideous monkey masks. Never, never hitch a ride. Never redundantly state the same thing in text and voiceover. We throw this boy into the path of an automobile. This is illegal in most communities, and for good reason. But it's mandatory in Hill Valley. If you want to do tricks like these... Illusions, Michael! Street, stunting and racing should be done in vacant lots or protected areas, away from pedestrians and traffic. So, you said you were going to show us some tricks, or...? Too much speed makes your bike harder to control. Only use downers to control your bike. Riding down a steep hill. Meanwhile, in Pottersville... When riding at night, be sure to wear light-colored clothing, so motorists can see you more easily. Make it easier for the creepy perverts who come out at night to film you from the car. Park your bike in a safe, proper place, standing upright. This is better for your bicycle, and it keeps people from stumbling over it in the dark. There! Right on top of Mom's flower bed! A lock on your bicycle is good protection against thieves. Be even better if you locked it to something, but... There's more to safe bicycle riding than just remembering the rules. You must be alert. This young Whoa! Is we almost had to give him a biking funeral. He's in danger. Because he's unconscious. No, seriously unconscious. He's been in a coma for five years and he's just been dreaming about biking. Learn to be an alert bicycle rider. You'll find that it helps you to avoid accidents. Yeah, well, he's constantly looking both ways. He rams headfirst into a wall in front of him. <laughs> so are these those tricks we were supposed to see? ...is asking for trouble. He confuses the motorist. Yeah, but the existence of turn signals confuses most motorists. Star Wars wipe, a Star Wars wipe. You'll know what these riders are doing wrong. Uh, not wearing helmets? Which is true of every biker you've shown us? What's wrong with the way this cyclist signals for a left turn? Uh, she forgot to tighten her spokes. Do you think the parents of this boy would be proud of the way he's learned to ride his new bike? Well, sure. No hands is impressive, no matter who you are. Will this girl's mother be happy when she sees her coming home with the groceries? If she gets there... If she's not hunted down by the grocery Gestapo? Why is this young man likely to spend some time in the hospital soon? Because he has pancreatic cancer, you insensitive bastard. This is Johnny's dad coming home with the groceries. Wait, now there are characters in this thing? Ah, there's no indignance better than 50s educational film Dad Indignance. Hrumph! Hrumph! As a bicycle owner and rider, you have a responsibility to care for your bike properly. Feed your bike properly. twice a day. It's your duty to obey the traffic rules, to be alert and quick-witted, to look out for the other fellow as well as for yourself. Yeah, looking out for the other fellow isn't exactly America's strong suit. As a good, safe bicyclist, you'll be respected by the people of your community. For you are proving to your friends... No, keep your hands on the handlebars! Hello, safe biker! Man, that kid is such a freaking square. Centron reminds you that the only truly safe bicycle is a dismantled bicycle. Good night, everybody.
with such sinister music? Is it the laboratory of some mad scientist? Oh, yeah, pretty much. This film's so old, back then they were just Captain Electric. Goodbye to garbage, goodbye to rubbish, goodbye to ragtime trash. Apparently it's a long goodbye. There's a dull brown, tedious tomorrow. Has this ever happened to you? Has a commercial ever asked you if you something's happened to you? We hope not, we're trying to be original. It makes a soggy package, but... Do not Google well, soggy package. package. At least you hope you will. And then... You're distracted by an orchestra hit. All over a nice, clean kitchen. Exasperating, isn't it? Well, mildly inconvenient, but sure. Living would be easier, and your work in the kitchen a lot less messy, if you never had to worry about a garbage can. Or if or somebody just invented, collection. you know, a bag. Wouldn't it be fun to never have to wrap a bit of garbage? Never have to do anything to get rid of garbage, except to twist the top like this. Wouldn't that be fun, kids? I know you youths love your top twisting. And another thing about a General Electric Super Grind Disposal. Another thing? Did we skip this a few pages? Science is completely out of your way. Virtually invisible. Yeah, tell that to your kid now that you've ruined their favorite hide-and-seek spot. And now let's take a look at a cutaway photo of the model we see here. Or just this cross-section of a Dalek. This is what the inside's like. Oh, you're uh, looking a little flaccid on the right Here's there. The top. It serves as the on and off switch, too. The two-quart capacity hopper. Capacity, that's Doc Hopper's first name. The shredding ring. Named after the wedding rings you'll lose in here. here. And the impeller. The power of GE impels you. And here's how all these look in the actual Dispose All unit. Dispose All units. Under the hopper being removed now is the shredding area of the Dispose All. And in the heart of this shredding area is a stainless steel flywheel. The flywheel of stainless As steel. The flywheel rotates more than seven. That was a deep cut news radio reference. It acts to force food waste into. The Shredding Ring. This Sunday in the Shredding Ring! Here in the ring, food waste is reduced to the tiniest of particles by the Carboloy Cutter. Watch the Carboloy Cutter destroy the food waste in the Shredding the Ring! This cutter grinds any type of waste with ease. It grinds any and waste with the greatest of the ease. Too. These are the two impellers that hold food wastes against the shredding ring until waste is ground finely enough to be washed down the drain. And watch this. Watch this! Are you watching? Are you watching? Mom, you're not watching! Every really coarse particle should try to jam the unit. The jam-resistant impellers back away and rotate to clear the jam. Oh yeah, I'm really glad I watched that. Mommy's trying to read, honey. This is the fruit flipper. My favorite penny arcade, arcade character. On the flywheel. It tumbles articles like grapefruit rinds over and over within grinding reach of the shredder ring. Oh, anything's grinding reach if you have a long enough torso. These are the shredder ring openings through which, once all of it has been finely ground, food waste is carried by centrifugal action to be washed down the drain by the running water. Yeah, I don't need to see how every Here part of it works, okay? ...of how a General Electric Super Grind Disposal works. See how it's cutting these grapefruit halves down to size and never giving them a chance to escape from the cutting action of the carboloy cutter. They beg for mercy, but the disposal is an unjust and god. Of course, particles like corn cobs get the works inside a general electric disposal. In almost less time than it takes to tell you about it. So like 10 seconds that feel like eight hours size or smaller and given a one-way ticket down the drain. Hey, at least someone can travel this year. The ease with which you can dispose of food wastes like corn cobs, who are not owned, watermelon, grapefruit, and other rinds, is one of the greatest joys of owning a General Electric Disposal. Honestly, with the way this year's gone, I crave the simple pleasure of rind destruction. Think this bone can stop a General Electric Disposal? Sounds like a trick question. Remember what I told you about that carboloy cutter? The bone doesn't have a chance. And remember, too, what happened when that other bone tried to jam a disposal. Should we really be ascribing intent to the actions of these bones? They'll do the same thing here. I know he was a monster to work with, but Kubrick really knew how to use slow-mo. That's life 
with the General Electric Disposal under your sink. Life with the General Electric Disposal under your sink, Tuesdays on CBS. Over. General Electric Disposals require a minimum of attention. Just like your family. To operate than an electric clock will even work on a septic tank. There's a model to exactly fit your needs. Yes, goodbye to garbage. That's what this happy woman might be saying. What she's actually saying is, please free me from this oppressive nightmare of a kitchen commercial. For a more gracious way of living, brought to you by General Electric. General Electric, we built Disney rides, we bought and sold Universal, and next we'll just put a power plant in SeaWorld or something. Oh boy, a movie from a car company. This will be even more fun than all those video games from fast food places. Achievement USA, the story of patting yourself on the back for doing the bare minimum. The achievement clearly wasn't creative font choice. Not that I'm one to judge. It looks like an ordinary day in the USA. That bad, huh? In the city of Flint, Michigan, all is excitement. Yeah, half minute in, this is already aged awkwardly. Thanks, 50s! And the older boys and girls are let out of school. Oh, this is a day. The whole town's a bustle. Better adjusted, yes, Irene Dunn. It's going to be a parade, too. And what's a parade without festive bunting and gala decoration? You call that bunting festive? Looks like a funeral procession. <laughs> Must keep corporate branding formation. And all over town, the final... In the old days, the cars stayed still and the drive throughs came to them. For this parade is going to be a mile long. Uh, don't go making claims you can't prove to Judge Al Lewis. Beep, beep, get off the road, sound sational. And in the town auditorium, a troupe of Broadway and Hollywood artists. Well, shouldn't the GM Futurama be played on Holophoner? Symbolizing the teamwork and progress of GM people everywhere. <laughs> Who invited the discount Donald O'Connor back there? Of very important guests. Hundreds of guests. Many of whom will arrive in Flint on a train pulled by a glistening diesel. A golden engine for a golden day. Yeah, sneaking some train propaganda into our car propaganda film. Coast to coast on this day, everywhere General Motors people are at work. For today in the USA... The Warriors come out to play. ...family is playing host. With open house at every plant. For this is a special day. A lot of hubbub for your nephew's bar mitzvah. A day of achievement for the whole USA. For on this day... General Motors is building its 50 millionth car. <laughs> yeah, big deal. I just ate my 50 millionth tater tot. So no wonder celebration is in the very air. I think that carnival pun forever poisoned the mind of a young John Lasseter. The red carpet's around. Red carpet designed by Brian De Palma. The signs of welcome are proudly displayed. Mothers are bringing the children to town. For on this day of days, parking is no problem. Just park the children in the back alley. The stomping ground for the cowboy and diaper set. Do not Google cowboy and diaper set. And Buick's general manager, Ivan Wiles, drops in. Played by Don Lake. And now on the Chevrolet production line, an historic event is about to occur. We're going to teach this car to swim. Millions of predecessors marching before, and the first of more millions following behind, a golden chassis arrives at the body drop. I've got a golden chassis. Well, this day in American progress, for the scurrying clock of history is striking 10, this Tuesday morning of November 23rd, 1954. Swinging Teddy Carr. Swings the golden body of a car that's been 46 years in the making. You'd think after 50 million, they'd learn to make them faster. Feet of the teamwork of American productive achievement. Unmatched anywhere at any time. Except for by that guy on TikTok who trained his monkey to open mail. Of 50 million motor cars. This film has 50 million mentions of the phrase 50 million. Achievement by a great nation. By the 160 million free people of that nation. Okay, if we all get some of the credit, can we all get some of your next bailout? General Motors working together. Must be added the work of the countless thousands who supply GM and the countless tens of thousands who supply them. Wait, is GM a pyramid scheme? Thousands of dealers and salesmen and servicemen who bring the executives their coke. ...for GM products. And the investors who entrust savings and earnings to GM. And the millions upon millions of customers. And the billions of sea creatures who died in the oil spills on the way to fuel our cars. 
and this event. So with pride, shared by every GM man and woman everywhere, Chevrolet's general manager, T.H. Keating, marks the occasion with General Motors president, Harlow H. Curtis. Both played by William H. Macy. It is a real honor and a privilege for Chevrolet to produce the 50 millionth car for General Motors. It is a history-making achievement. Okay, if you pat yourself on the back any harder, you'll give yourself a hernia. It is a pleasure for me, Mr. Curtis, to present to you the key to the 50 millionth car. Thank you very much, Mr. Keating. But my license was revoked a week ago. Uh, men of Chevrolet and Fisher. Fisher Stevens, my guest of honor. Sincere congratulations. You have just helped accomplish something that has never been accomplished before. Satisfying my wife. You have produced the 50 millionth car built by General Motors in the, in the United States. Bob Cummings' grandpa. Since 1908. Before 1908, all bets were off. This is a milestone. Okay, who melted Dwight Eisenhower? World's industrial history. It was the vision. And Wanda. Of a bare handful of men here in Flint that, lost, that launched General Motors. And that lost our minds. The automobile industry was a struggling infant at that time. I had an onion on my seatbelt, which was the style at the time. The same vision existed. Vision of the automobile. Driven by circus bears. As an essential means of transportation. So screw that train from earlier. As a creator of jobs and a destroyer of environments. The, been the development of an industry that makes the greatest single contribution of any to the strength of the national economy. This guy calls himself a car Over manufacturer. Years, he hasn't slandered anyone who's rescuing children. The principal source of our country's dynamic growth. The 50 millionth General Motors car produced in this country. In other countries, all bets are off. As a symbol of vision of accomplishment to date. It also is a symbol of progress for the future. Quick, cheer loudly so nobody will notice how boring he was. So hoist those flags on high. Blow those whistles. Smash the ceremonial taillight. We pay tribute to these wonderful cars with Walking on Foot. Oli, the wooden soldiers. Oh, great. More pollution. Ah, uh, this is a day. Yes, we firmly established that this is a day. New models of the famous five. It would take another 50 million cars before they'd invent a back seat. GMC truck and coach with surging power for the wheels of progress. Nah, that's not my bus either. I'm going to be late to work. Electromotive, with the revolutionary power for the wheels of steel. That the paint the day parade is less impressive. Horse. Fisher body. I hardly know her body. From the days of demure Miss 1908 to modern as tomorrow Miss 1955. Miss 2020 is just a house coat filled with six rabid badgers. UAWCIO. EIEIO. 100,000 members of the mighty GMT. Well, I'm sure this positive relationship between GM and the union will never be threatened. AC Spark Plug. From Saved by the Bell? Bell yeah. Yeah. Technology. It's McGruff's burnout cousin. To make this nation strong. And here's General Motors Institute. And a bunch of flashers. Still less sketchy than the goat and the dog. Achievement. And turnstep that puts GM's hardware out in front. Mom! Mom! Over here! I saved you a seat! Mom! And of course, little did they dream it, here's the very first GM car. They hadn't figured out how to make cars drive yet, so they all had to be carried around on parade floats. In all history. And GM's million, a 1919 Oldsmobile. Same price as a roast beef at the Dubonnet Club. Five million. A Pontiac from way back in 1926. Bill Pontiac cutting a rug there. That was partially another deep cut news radio reference. A Buick of only three years later, 1929. The float clearly says 28, you gaslighting narrator. A Chevrolet of only yesterday, 1940. A Chevrolet of yesterday. Oh, it's a great day, all right. 
a salute to Mr. and Mrs. America. But mostly all nations. Wait. Who as one people have pioneered and protected the way of life that is the USA. And we're confident that this depiction of a stable middle class will always be accurate. Proudly symbolized here today by this unparalleled achievement that marks a milestone of progress pointing the way towards still greater things. Like For even more cars. Everywhere to share. The boss gets rich off our teamwork. And the doubters and scoffers. I could have sworn I parked over here. This is exactly where I left my truck. Somebody stole all our cars during the parade. Seen nothing yet. I gotta say, Roger and me is a lot less hard hitting than I remember. Paramount. We lost Superman to Warner, we lost Marvel to Disney, we even lost Popeye. Who knows what comic we'll lose next? Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Uh, I was really hoping it was a bird. Superman in Technicolor and presented in a 4x3 format to preserve the integrity of Dave Fleischer's creative vision. Superman has an arrangement with Action Comics. He can cheat on them, but only for an animated short that Action Comics can later buy and forget to renew the copyright on. Hey, Apple released the new Ice Barber. Well, so far, Sammy Timberg's the MVP of this short. I guess I have to like this short because of Dave's solidarity. Ooh, classic Harp Glissando. Spontaneation flashback. In the endless reaches of the universe. Oh, damn, just another Land Before Time sequel. Krypton, a planet that burned like a green star in the... Wait, Krypton's the green planet? They Somebody saved Botanicus! And it brought forth a race of supermen whose mental and physical powers were developed to the absolute peak of human perfection. They developed the power to later retcon that explanation into some nonsense involving sun color. One of the planet's leading scientists, sensing the approach of doom, placed his infant son in a small rocket ship and sent it hurtling in the direction of the Earth. Pretty sure that's the general direction of Earth. Good luck, kid. Ugh, we let E.T. and Steven down. They were counting on us. The rocket ship sped through star-studded space, landing safely on Earth with its precious burden, Krypton's sole survivor. A passing motorist found the uninjured child and took it to an orphanage. <laughs> Can't kill Jonathan Kent if you just don't have Jonathan Kent. He found himself possessed of amazing physical powers. Faster than a speeding bullet. Take that, Sky! More powerful than a locomotive. But not as powerful as a boat stuck in a canal. Tall buildings at a single bound. Uh, until the animators thought, that looks silly, let's just make him fly. Drink it all in, folks. This is me. To use his amazing powers in a never-ending battle for truth and justice, Superman has assumed the disguise of Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Meanwhile, at Great Metropolitan Newspaper... Oh, there you are, Perry White. I want to see you. Just received another threatening note. Okay, Mr. White. Lois, another note from the mad scientist. Coming in, Chief. Oh, he doesn't mind if she calls him Chief. Well, listen to this warning. He's already Plans stolen the animator's desire to sink lips. Beware, you fools. Do you think he means My us? The nasal ray strikes tonight at 12. Total destruction will come to those who laughed at me and failed to heed my warning. But if you only did one of those, you're safe. I strike at midnight. This nut may prove dangerous. Well, let's not jump to conclusions. Yes, you help Lois follow up her lead. She may have an angle on this thing. Yes, sir. But, Chief, I'd like the chance to crack the story on my own. I don't want to work with this douche nozzle. No offense, Clark. Thanks, Chief. But Lois. <laughs> but Lois. What are you, Shatner Man? Don't you think that's a dangerous mission? I guess we'll never know. Meanwhile, in the animated adventures of Amelia Earhart, Fearless Flyer, she's barely checking the plane at all. Bicycle safety lied to me. Look, up in the sky! It's still not a bird, Debbie. Later that night, in the tallest building on Seuss Landing, Dr. Claw's grandfather stared at the clock for a while. Oh, he's pet sitting for Snow White's stepmother. The hour has come. Fermi spinach. Ah, gah, 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 gah. 
perfect time to fire up the old Interocitor, convene with Exeter and Brack. Sound designed by an electric football game. Uh, I like the bevels. An invisible giant with night vision. Oh, come on, I just let you out. I'm getting a pet door. Oh, why didn't I make sure this place had a landing strip before I left? An intruder must daintily tiptoe down the stairs. So the mad scientist lab is in Dracula's tower from King's Quest 2? All right, door, now cough. <laughs> no pet door, just a pet lock. Oh, I'm by a hydrant. Gotta finish this delivery before I get towed. The best security systems are two-man operations. I'm a reporter for the... Can't you see what I'm trying to tell you? I love you. <laughs> Better be careful and lock up. There are bad guys out there. Action Comics was like, uh, fine, you can give Superman the power of flight, but you'll have to take it away from someone else. So, you want the story? I'll give you the greatest story of destruction the world has ever known. It's called What Jack Mercer is Doing to His Vocal Cords. <laughs> now to send the orange juice through the pipes to the static electricity gun. Damn it, O'Hara, why did you aim the bat signal at the ground? Yay, he made the traffic disappear! How is that for a story, Miss Lane? <laughs> uh, gotta be honest, it kinda lost me. No real structure to speak of. True to his threat, the mad Zionist, whose warnings have held the city in a grip of terror, went on his rampage of destruction on the stroke of midnight. Hey, fellas, is this another Orson Welles hoax? Smashed the famous tower bridge, hurling cars and... <laughs> These guys coming out of a clown car? The police have warned everyone to remain in their homes. This looks like a job for Superman. I mean, sure, maybe Superman could have intervened before people died on the bridge, especially if Lois knew where the mad scientist lived the whole time. But now that I've waited for the last possible second to tiptoe into the stockroom and change into Superman, I can finally tiptoe even more slowly to the window and save the day way too late for anyone. And here we have an iconic moment, the first time Superman ever flew, forever changing the shape of pop culture, ultimately making 1978 even more embarrassing for the makers of the cat from outer space. In the 40s, you had to use a dial to browse Zillow. Ooh, this is one precarious game of Jenga. I gotta change my visor! Ah, oh, what? I transferred to the loose wooden beams department of Great Metropolitan Newspaper! He flew all the way to Toontown. Whew, I was almost late for the trust fall. Nobody thinks they'll need a skyscraper chiropractor, but then... Up, up, and down! Nah, you were better leaning the other way. The building changes color when it's straightened. I'm sure it'll be fine just balanced there without its foundation. Seems like a long way to go just to work on your tan. That's why they retconned the yellow sun stuff. A film climaxing with a superhero fighting a sky beam? It'll never catch on. It's Superman! Ah, crap! Why did I forget he lives in Metropolis? Better ramp up the factory mechanics, the steampunk piping, the industrial lava lamps, and the juice tubing in order to get the laser going really hard. Yeah! Ah, my one weak spot, my back! And a gentle dismount. Ha! You may have almost defeated me through a cape and another layer of clothing, but now that I have my bare fists, I'll punch your laser to death! I don't believe it! He isn't human! Yeah, you'd think the flying would have tipped you off. This is what it looks like trying to get the prank snake back in the can. Oh, he pulled the Dragon Ball meme lever. Krypton was developed to the absolute peak of balloon animal technique perfection. 
Can't get enough super golden crisp. That might be too deep a cut even for me. Oh god, don't pop that pimple! Gross. Now to support myself in these walls. Aw, oh, come on. Oh, is this that Lil Nas X video where he goes to hell? I'm still in this one. Honestly, kind of an underreaction to it raining fire. Nobody move, I dropped a contact somewhere. Boy, Lois, I bet you wouldn't have gotten into this mess if you let that dashing young Kent fella join you. I guess nobody wants to fly when these fun stairs are an option. Now, did everyone use the bathroom before we left? Aha, it's the background artist's time to shine. Get on the floor, then wait your own turn to walk the dinosaur. Ah, that's the face of a man who's expecting the camera to iris out on him. At least he gets a souvenir photo. Congratulations, Lois. That was a great scoop. Yes, Chief. Thanks to Superman. <laughs> I'm sitting on the wrong side of my desk because I'm a scamp. Superman will return in revenge of the really cartoony bird sidekick that totally got away. Ah, that coronet seal of approval. Get ready to be bored, kids. Learn to argue effectively how to speak fast enough that idiots mistake your non sequiturs for facts and logic. With a name like Utterback, you have to be a good arguer. Uttering back, I don't know, there's something there. What do you want from me? I'm going to argue with you! The story of an arguer. Jeff loved to argue about anything and everything. After all, the Vikings were here before Columbus, and so were the Indians. I mean, outdated labels aside, he's right about this, so are we supposed to take his side? And you say Jonesville won the tournament last year? Oh, <laughs> yes, those were equally important subjects of debate. You must be crazy to eat that stuff. Maybe he should try arguing with people? Ten cars that'll hold the road better. We don't need to enter a new conference. That's just the coach's idea. He wants a better job next year. If you all. like to argue so much, Jeff Field, why don't you go out for debate and learn something about it? Look. Good question, talking bulletin board. Debate squad in color. Oh, now they can afford an extra. I'm going to argue with that curtain. All the stupid. Now, what's a puppet theater have to do with debating? Gee, <laughs> puppets are neat, though. Thank you, Alice. We've an interesting gadget here. It's a Rescue Rangers puppet show? Now, we're here today to find out how to argue. Is that so difficult? Well, is it? Well, Debate me! To become skilled in argumentation. Okay, Alice. Now, first of all, what subjects are worth arguing about? Uh, the gender of Ghostbusters? Now, let's see how many of us can recognize suitable subjects for arguments. So we can sell one to Michael Palin. Oh, Judy, Judy, where are you? Judy, my love? That's a terrible oh, Cary Grant. You, silly. Well, now you're here. Listen, I went out to the farm yesterday. You did, and what for? Oh, look at the animals, and I saw a purple cow, and I... Purple cow? And that was yeah, the day when Lady I'm Elaine sure snapped and decided to murder Lord Fairchild. Why with my mouth, silly? Answer my question, I know you talk with your mouth, but that's not what I mean. Well, then say what you mean. I'd argue well, with my I spouse, too, if we had the exact same cow. voice. Now, who said anything about talking to a cow? Why don't you listen? You interrupt all the time. Now, look at here. You take that and that and that. You talk to a cow. <laughs> well, Domestic abuse is fun. A good subject for argument? What was the argument about? Yes? I, I guess it was... Whether Punch talked to a cow. You can feel her mourning her own dignity saying that line. If there's no evidence available on your subject, why argue? Uh, have you what met would people? Be a better subject for them to argue. Well, Judy might try to convince Punch that there is no such thing as a purple cow. <laughs> a purple cow? She might try to what is a good subject for argument? What counts as cinema? He thought about that one. Then he imagined he a purple cow. You say Jonesville won the tournament last year? Pointless to argue about a fact. I mean, you'd think so, That's but really here we all in. are. Oh, liverwurst. You must be crazy to eat that stuff. 
pointless, too, to argue about matters of personal taste. They are seldom changed by argument. But your taste is wrong. That's the silliest opinion I've ever heard. Why, there are ten cars that'll hold the road better. Arguments about opinions can be purposeful. For argument often does change opinions. But not opinions about taste, apparently. We don't need to enter a new conference. And arguments about proposed actions can be purposeful. If the talking bulletin points. board doesn't interrupt first. Yes, Jeff thought about these things. And wondered why smarmy coronet right. teacher was creeping in the back. If it's a subject on which we can influence what others believe, argument has purpose. If not, why argue? Agree? Fine. No time to now, argue. Moving on. Another question. Assuming that we have a good subject for argument, how should we argue? With as much ad hominem as possible. Oh, well, where do you think you're going? Well, I'm going to Garden City next year with the team. We're going to join the new athletic conference, you know. Huh, just because everybody wants to take a trip, we have to join a new athletic conference. Sound familiar, Jeff? Yeah, the bulletin board told me about your little chat. Ah, Alice cloned her own voice somehow. Pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little. Well, anyway, you'll agree we should try to put our school on the map if we can. Sure, if we can. Murmur, murmur, hubbub, hubbub. We've done okay right now. Well, now there's well no let's not have, have the same oh, kind of argument that they had. Then don't show us imitatable behavior. So we learned it from watching you. We chose it because it is a real issue here in our school right now. People's lives are on the line, kids. The subject for argument, agreed? The question is, how can we make that argument profitable? How can we monetize can the we argument? How can we so as to change opinions? Now, let's repeat this Punch and Judy argument. That should pad out the film. Whenever you see anything that keeps it from being profitable, we'll stop the show. We'll tear the whole thing down if we have to. All right, Alice. We're ready to kiss Flo's grits. Oh, well, where do you think you're going? Oh, I'm going to Garden City next year as a team. I didn't ask where you're going next year, dumbass! Wait a minute. Oh, something wrong there. We haven't decided whether to join the new conference or not. Punch doesn't seem to know what he's talking about. And you feel you have to know what you're talking about to argue profitably. I'll say. <laughs> well, you'll never make it on Twitter. One. They have to cut away for the stunt handwriter. Inform. Know your subject. I totally wrote that all by myself, you know. How to argue profitably. All right, Alice. Ha! <laughs> Just because everybody wants to take a trip, we have to join a new athletic conference. Well, this is our big chance. We'll put our school on the map. Garden City, This is actually how they make love. Punch and Judy aren't listening to each other. How can Punch convince Judy if he doesn't know what Judy thinks, and vice versa? Good point. That's step two. Read your opponent's thoughts with the mind meld. Listen. And understand. You can't argue profitably until you know what your opponent believes. No matter how stupid their beliefs are. You'll agree we should try to put our school on a map if we can. Oh, sure, if we can. Well, Hold why can't Isn't there something there? Something sweet and almost I mean, kind? Well, sometimes when you're arguing, you waste time over points you really agree on. At least Punch was trying there. Good point. I wondered whether anyone would catch that. Wondered if any little punk would take Punch's side. Find common Ground. No one will be seated during the staring at a teacher writing on the chalkboard scene. They have to, or else the argument won't convince anyone of anything. And if you know where you agree, you can see more clearly where you disagree. Isn't that important in argument? Ah. Uh, ah, Bach. The issues. Wow, our teacher really knows how to write on a chalkboard in front of an audience. Once you know exactly where you disagree, then you know exactly where to apply your information and reasoning. So, find the issue. Find the issue step in time. Work on them. Oh, I'll work on you. I'll work on you. These Wilkins coffee ads were so violent. After that, Jeff thought about subjects for argument, about methods of argument. He watched himself, too. Well, that's silly. The rehearsal couldn't be at 7 o'clock. Miss Alquist can't. 
Miss Alcat can't get there by seven. The most you annoying know, shoulder you demons know, ever. What'd you say? Oh, never mind. I'm just yeah, losing my tenuous grip on my mind in reality itself. Here. Don't mind me. He tried to save his arguing for topics worth argument. Opinions. Proposed actions where his argument might make a difference. Like petitions to keep Splash Mountain racist. He tried to be informed. Getting knowledge that would be useful to make his arguments profitable. Who am I kidding? No matter how hard I study, I'll never understand the plot listen, of Tenet. To understand his opponents and their positions. He tried to find common ground... With his own therapist. Worked better than his previous attitude of, I dare you to fix me. He tried to find the issues. I'm telling you, with the curtain this big, the puppets lurking audience. back there must be huge. Don't mess with them. It took time to learn to argue effectively. Time that could have been spent doing anything else with his life. But one day, not long ago... Listen, gang, ticket sales are going swell. So I guess we'll have to reserve the gym for our party. This is the most depressed I've ever heard anyone sound about anything. That's rather expensive, isn't it? No, it isn't. Besides, think of all the... Do you know how much they charge for the lodge? Uh-oh, he's using his disappointed dad voice. Well, we want our party to be informal, don't we? That's right. We could have a good informal time at the lodge. We could decorate there. And then young Morrissey fireplace. and younger Elizabeth Taylor. That's a wonderful idea. So don't you think we should first find out the cost of the lodge and then decide? Yes, Jeff is still an arguer. But that one guy is hidden by a lamp. To make his arguments purposeful and profitable. How well do you argue? Apparently not well enough if you couldn't argue your way out of watching this. Good night, everybody. Paramount, our streaming service is so far not any less successful than our theme parks were. Up in the sky, look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Hey, no fair guessing after he leaves his name in the sky in giant letters. Oh yeah, it's a Max Fleischer cartoon. Just ignore the younger brother doing the directing here. The uh, Mechanical Monsters, or as I like to call it, an orgy at Elon Musk's house. Ah, we got a wonderful show for you tonight. Joan Rivers is here. Have you been injured by a mechanical monster? Call the law offices of Mufati and Germanetti. You may be entitled to animation. No, no, it's my older brother's cartoon. I just directed it, that's all. Faster than a speeding bullet. This exposition, I mean. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Would have been easier to walk around it, but he's a show off. Krypton, the man of steel. <laughs> Superman. Empowered with X-ray vision. We forgot to mention that last time. Physical strength. Superman fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. Disguised as a mild-mannered newspaper reporter, Clark Kent. This is my mild-mannered pose. Uh-oh, Falcon's gone rogue. He really isn't ready to be Captain America. Hey, buddy, your safety deposit box is beeping. Open the Fantasyland Castle in the name of the mechanical monsters of the world! Hey, Vincent Half Price. And a hungover Captain Lightyear returns home at 6 a.m. No wonder they call him Buzz. Hey, it's Five, my favorite obscure Peanuts character. That's a real deep cut even for me. Now, I'm no electrician, but I'm sure having those sparks fly wildly is perfectly safe. Yes, with this horde of Chuck E. Cheese prize tickets, we'll be able to upgrade to the medium-sized plushie. Yeah, I can see why this thing prefers to fly rather than walk. Not the most organized storage system for your mechanical monsters. Extra, extra, get your exposition here! House of Jewels? Oh boy, I bet they'll have all the albums. Pieces of You, the rest. Extreme precautions, so all the security staff will be on skateboards drinking Red Bull. 
Hurry guys, hide in the exhibit before we get frozen in place like these other people. Here's Julesy. Ooh, the sparkle animator's really working overtime. Is it about to turn into the beautiful girl sequence from Singing in the Rain? Oh, I hope no one makes fun of my floppy hat. Lois, what are you doing? <laughs> He's so angry, they just hate each other. <laughs> halt right there, no woman's angle on this story! Okay, that one's gotta be a bird, right? Just go home, Debbie. I am the dread pirate Roberts. How, once again, our old friend robot number five, or er, number 13. I just remember these are blanks. It ain't a Superman movie without forced Jesus imagery. Oh, five again. I guess 13 was the stunt robot. Come on, you fool. You want to get trampled? Well, maybe I do, Lois. Don't kink shame me. God, what are you doing here? Hey, take all you want, but eat all you take. Now you wait here, I'll phone this in. <laughs> yeah, stay out in the open air where it's safe. Chief, Lois showed up and I got mad at her. Make her go home. That is one sloppy thief bot. Well, this is the biggest apartment I can afford in Metropolis. Yes, I'll give you the details later, Chief. All right, Lois, let Lois. What are you doing not here? This is a job for Superman. And another iconic moment, the first time Superman ever changed in a phone booth. Which means, technically, that aspect of the Superman lore is in the public domain. You know, just in time for it to be completely irrelevant as phone booths stop existing. 13 again. I give up. Demon! The power of kryptonite compels you! Oh, she's just in Scrooge McDuck's hot tub. All right, Lois, this'll show you for doing things here. Walt Disney tests the first audio animatronic. Yeah, great failsafe system. Faster than a speeding boulder! No, he killed the birds from that one Pixar short! Boy, she has remarkable upper body strength. Ah, my reused animation is coming in handy. Liquid Lois Lane. story this is going to make. And that douchebag Clark asked what I was doing here. The jewels. Ah, what Salvador Dali. With the jewels. You'll read about it in tomorrow's paper. Are you going to tell me what happened to those jewels? I told you in tomorrow's paper. Actual footage of me untangling my earbuds. That sparkling earlier took a lot out of them, so they're just gonna let the background shine for a bit. Oh, it's nice that his hideout had a portal to hell. Man, the scale of the Calico Mine Train ride really is impressive. Oh, I see motion. We must be almost at the plot now. Next, we pan across the mad scientist's table of Warhammer figurines, his model train kit, and a set of dishware from his grandma that he has no use for but doesn't have the heart to get rid of. All right, Miss Lane, fondue's almost ready. So, you won't tell me. I told you, tomorrow's paper. We gotta sell somehow. You'll soon change your mind. I feel like there was a less cumbersome way to torture the information out of her. If that's my DoorDash, it's 20 minutes late. Pardon me, gents. Know where I can find a robot kind of like you, but with a woman inside? Superman. Crap, that other mad scientist warned me he lived around here, but I didn't listen. Why didn't you store them in numerical order? 
I'll just wait patiently for them all to go online. And now the Robo Rockets! Yeah, whatever. What? Oh, they're still over here too? Lucky jerk still gets to experience the backdraft attraction. Bird baby burn, Crypto Inferno! Six hours later, Lois continues the slow inch towards her gradual doom. Does the pounding with fists make much difference after the fire? Try the Mechanical Monsters home game. All you have to do is take your Rock'em Sock'em robots and set them on fire. Yeah, I knew I shouldn't have sat in the splash zone. And these evil robots have just enough Kryptonian strength to pad out the short to its entire length. Fine, I'll just move to the medieval castle wing. Miss Lane, while you're waiting, do you want to see some shadow puppets? No, the wood didn't stop him. Take one more step and she's doomed. But what is she doing here? Oh, right, I forgot about your super speed. Well, I was hoping to do this without making a mess, but... So the lava-proof cape wasn't worthy of mentioning in the intro, even though it's much more plot-relevant than the X-ray vision. Well, I failed. Goodbye, crew world. Damn it, you won't let me have this one thing! He's taking them to the playmat on the floor of a church nursery. Millions in jewels recovered after they dug them out of that tangle of telephone wires they fell near. Did they really need a full second front page column about Superman vanishing? That's a wonderful story, Lord. I'm sorry I was mad at you for showing up. But I owe it all to Superman. Damn straight you do. Superman will return in Superman versus the Mitchells versus the Mechanical Monsters. 